Welcome to my talk on undefined behavior in cellular network specifications. And I want to start my talk by telling you the story of a vulnerability that we found. And that vulnerability is in um, the firmware of MediaTek smartphone basebands. A baseband, as many of you probably already know, is the component inside your phone that on the one hand connects to the LTE network, and on the other hand connects to um, the main application processor inside your phone to provide the network services offered by the cellular network to that main application processor, for instance, to enable calls or to enable data connections. And the vulnerability that we found is in a component or in a functionality um, that's called the public warning system. It's in the US also known as wireless emergency alerts and um, sometimes also called cellular uh, cell broadcast. And that is used by, um, for instance, governments to alert citizens of natural disasters. Uh, one instance where this was also used was the uh, 2018 Hawaii false missile alert. Um, and how this works is that um, once this message is to be sent by the government, the cell towers that are in the area where the people are that need to be alerted periodically broadcast this emergency message. And once a phone moves into the vicinity of the cell tower, um, it will receive the message. One interesting feature of this is that if the text of the message is too long to fit into a single network packet, it can be fragmented. So let's assume we have the text ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii, and we want to split it between threat and inbound. Now the problem is that since this is periodically broadcasted and not broadcasted to a specific phone, a phone might enter the vicinity of the cell tower at any time. It could happen that the phone receives the messages out of order. So it might enter the vicinity of the cell tower after the first segment has been sent, but before the second segment is sent, and then it will receive the second segment first, and then at some point will um, receive the first segment. In order to reorder these messages, um, apart from the text, each, text uh, each segment also contains a segment number, which is like the position if it has to be uh, after it has been reordered, and a Boolean flag that tells the baseband if this is the last segment. And in the MediaTek implementation of this, um, they have like an array, and that array stores the text segments in order. They also have two integers, and these integers store the number of received segments and the number of segments in total the baseband has to receive before it can um, reassemble the message. So now if it receives the first message, it will store it into the second slot because this is the second segment. Um, it will then also update the number of target segments, and at this point the baseband already knows that in total it will have to receive two segments, namely the first and the second segment. And now it would receive the first segment, which it can then put into the first slot, compare that it has received two segments and needs to receive two segments, reassemble these, and display them to the user. Now let's assume a malicious scenario. Um, for instance, this could be a fake base station or somebody injecting additional segments into um, the stream over the air, which is possible because these messages are not protected anyway. There's no encryption and no authentication. Um, let's assume we start by again receiving the second segment first. But now the next segment that we are going to receive is labeled to be the third segment instead of the first segment. And what happened was that the baseband would store this into the third slot. But now again compare that it has received two segments and it needs to receive two segments. It will then reassemble the first slot which has never been initialized with the second slot, which leads to an uninitialized read, which triggers an assertion, which then crashes the baseband. Now, the interesting part is that we did not discover this by reverse engineering or fuzzing, but we discovered this by looking at the specification. And this is the specification that uh, codifies how this public warning system has to work. Uh, because this is a little bit um, this is not really great to read um, from a slide. I translated it into a decision diagram. And it basically covers three cases. The first case is the incoming segment is a complete warning message, so it has never been fragmented into multiple parts. And in that case, the um, message can just be immediately shown. 
The second case is mm, it is fragmented and we are currently assembling a message. In that case, the baseband has to check if it has previously received enough segments to have now a complete message and then show that message. And the third case that's specified is that um, the baseband is still lacking some segments, so it has to store this particular segment. And the problem is the scenario that we've seen, you at some point end up at a decision in the middle, and now none of the decisions that you can take really makes sense. On the one hand, not all of the segments have been received, so we definitely cannot show the message. On the other hand, we also don't want to store that third segment because in no scenario can we ever reassemble this properly. So this scenario is basically undefined behavior. Now, how to find this undefined behavior in a more systematical way is one of the questions that we tackled in our paper. And we did this um, by looking at the states that the um, baseband could have. And I will start um, again with the state machine that covers the same scenario that we had in the beginning. So um, the baseband starts by being completely empty, so no message have, uh, messages have been received, and then we receive um, the second segment. So it will trans uh, transition into a state where it has only received the second segment. And at that point, the only segments that make sense to receive is the first segment. So that's another state that we have. And now at we look, if we look at that middle state, um, we want to ask ourselves, okay, which inputs would now lead to an undefined state? So we introduce an undefined state. And now since we have definitions for everything that is defined, so basically the transition from the middle state into the state on the very right, we know that all the other possible inputs are undefined from that middle state. So we can just take these, negate them, and we know that the precondition to translate or to transition from the middle state into the undefined state are the other states for which we have no defined behavior. And what we then want to find is just a path from the initial empty state into the undefined state. And that's something that a model checker can easily do. Of course, if you want to do this like properly and cover all the cases, it's not sufficient to only look at the scenario where in the beginning we received the second segment, but all the segments, which makes the state machine pretty large. Um, which brings me to the key challenges of our paper. Um, so first of all, there are a lot of dependencies within the network packet. Um, we have seen the segment number and the segment type thing so they need to be viewed like together, so and you need to be able to um, express dependencies between them. We also have packet sequences for state setup, for fragmentation and reassembly. And we've also timers in a lot of cases in the specification. Uh, timers are commonly used, for instance, for deduplication, for timeouts, for expiry of credentials. Uh, we have examples for that in the paper. Now, the solution to this is we stay with this idea of have creating a state machine and then adding this undefined state, but instead of manually creating the state machine, we use um, TLA plus. TLA plus is essentially um, temporal logics, and that allows us to, on the one hand, use mathematical notation to express these dependencies, and on the other hand, use um, temporal logic then to express these sequences and timers. Um, so if you don't know temporal logic, it's essentially like predicate logic, but you, in addition, get the possibility to express assertions about the future. Um, so again, we start by modeling the defined behavior from the specification, and then we add this undefined state, and because the preconditions for the undefined state are essentially uh, derivable syntactically, all you have to do is think about the defined behavior and the undefined behavior can then be inferred automatically. Uh, we did this for three parts of the LTE specification, the public warning system that I already told you about, SMS, and something called radio resource control, which is essentially the protocol that um, is used to es establish the initial session between your cell phone and the cell tower. And uh, we derived between eight and 28 undefined behaviors for each of these three components. We then conducted an overly air evaluation. Um, we again um, inferred these undefined behaviors, and 
took them and put them into a software-defined radio, which reassembled our experimental um, cellular test network. And then we used some real and commercial phones to test their behavior. We then found five, undefined, uh, five exploitable undefined behaviors, which have resulted in three CVEs. So to summarize, um, we found that the cellular specification contains a lot of undefined behavior. And we then discovered that this undefined behavior can be derived from a model of the defined behavior. And we've seen a lot of bugs caused by this undefined behavior, so it seems like it promotes insecure implementations. And if you follow this QR code, um, we have the, the paper there, as well as artifacts and a kind of tutorial hands-on thing. And with that, I would like to end my talk and would be open for questions.